Thank you very much. Before uh, starting, I know I'll be uh, talking a little bit about Aetna later uh, when we talk about our side street to main street program. But I would like to thank a couple people from Aetna here. Chris Marant Tros uh, from the foundation does a great job working with uh, us along with Floyd Green and also uh, Marta Machuba. Uh, who is really on our health care council, uh, does a great job for our chamber. Let's have a round of applause for both of them. Thank you very much for being with us. Also today we have with us uh, from three school districts, uh, Mercy High School, Valley Regional, and Hale Ray. We appreciate our young uh, future leaders uh, joining us at these uh, breakfast meetings every month. It uh, gives me a great honor now to introduce Nathan Groob from the uh, Travelers Championship. Uh, I asked him to say a couple words uh, today. Thank you. Ten years in and we're still working with Larry on the title of the title sponsor. Um, no, uh, thank you. I just wanted to say a few words, as Larry said, um, to say thank you to um, Aetna this morning. Um, Travelers obviously is a significant sponsor of the tournament that we just had and we're 314 days away from next year if anybody's counting. But uh, we're wrapping up this, uh, this uh, 2015 with a um, charity press conference in a few weeks to announce how much charity um, dollars were raised. But Travelers obviously is a big piece of this, but they cover about half of what it takes to put on a PGA Tour event. And without partners like Aetna, uh, we really could not have a PGA Tour event in this region. It is unbelievably expensive and the amount of work and time that goes into putting it on you cannot do it without the community support and um, Aetna has been a partner for a number of years and um, you know we're probably gonna give away a little over 1.5 million this year to 140 charities in the region economic impact in the community of more than 30 million dollars uh, tournaments broadcast in hundreds of countries uh, basically as a commercial for our state for our region and that wouldn't be possible without partners like Aetna. So thank you very much, and uh, Larry gave me a chance to say thank you very much. Appreciate it. Gives me a great honor now to introduce our chairperson who's done a uh, terrific job this year in our leadership uh, of the chamber. We're very proud of Vin Capice, the job he not only does uh, in leadership for us, but also with Middlesex Hospital. Great business leader, great person, Vin Capice. Morning, everyone. Uh, feels like fall is already here, and uh, I'm still thinking about summer, so I don't know about you. I uh, just wanted to um, thank all of our state and local officials who are here in attendance today. Uh, at your tables, there's a blue sheet which lists everyone. I won't go through the names, but just wanted to thank them. Uh, I also want to welcome our new members. I'm going to call their names and if you can uh, stand up and be recognized. Uh, first is Crystal Clear Services LLC uh, from Moodis. Someone here from that company if you can stand up? No? Uh, second is Silver Petroselli and, and Associates from Hamden. And last is TACE from Hartford. Anyone from that company? Let's give all our new members a round of applause. Also, uh, Middlesex United Way wants to recognize uh, Dr. Patricia Charles and Greg Tracy, who were the chairs, uh, co-chairs of the uh, this past year's uh, campaign, capital campaign. Uh, can they stand and be recognized? They here. Let's give them a round of applause anyway. Okay. We also want to recognize the United Way loan executives, uh, Audrey Livingston, who was sponsored by Middlesex Hospital, as well as Michael Eck, who was sponsored by Pratt & Whitney. Are they here today if they can stand to be recognized? <laughs> Audrey, I see you down there. Have a good day. Thank you. Well, uh, about 6.30 Friday night, I got a phone call from Johanna. Uh, as you know that uh, we're running, uh, besides these great breakfasts which we run every month, uh, we've got an agreement with R.J. Julia's which we're going to be running four book signing events a year uh, with them. Uh, we've already had, uh, as you know, John McCain uh, and he uh, signed over 612 books uh, and uh, the second one was Gail Sheehy. 
uh, with our woman's leadership uh, function, and then that one was over 350 books uh, in attendance at that in July. I'm honored to announce that on October 19th, our third book signing event will take place with Bob Woodward, October 19th. Bob Woodward, uh, we're expecting a big crowd at that, so just put it down. It's a lunch meeting, 11.30 to 1 o'clock. Uh, he's got a new book out, uh, and uh, we're really honored for that. Uh, so just a heads up on that one. Gives me an, a great honor now to introduce uh, the event of the year coming up after the Travelers Golf Tournament, of course. Uh, both of these events are uh, really uh, ha have a little competition to see who can get the most people to attend. Uh, both are around a quarter of a million, and it brings a lot of people into Middlesex County to not only enjoy the event, but more importantly, spend their money, uh, support all of our local businesses in our area. Deb Husher, uh, thank you for the great job that you've done uh, in marketing for the Durham Fair. And Deb was uh, last year's real estate uh, Mary Ellen Klink Award winner from the uh, Chamber also. Deb. Yes, the Durham Fair. Well, to quote Larry, the sun always shines in Middlesex County, and this weekend is going to be shining in Durham Fair for the 96th annual Durham Fair. We've been recognized for the second year in a row as the best country fair in Connecticut, and we're quite proud of that. Larry always emphasizes the importance of the Durham Fair to Middlesex County. Last year, we had well over 200,000 people driving down our roads, passing our local businesses to come to the Durham Fair. Not only is the fair important to our local businesses, it is the biggest fundraising opportunity for a lot of nonprofits and civic groups. Durham Fair pays $65,000 to civic groups like the Boy Scouts and the Durham um, Volunteer Fire Department to help with parking during that time period. And we have 34 nonprofits that are there. So conservatively, if they sell, if they earn $10,000 plus that $65,000, that's well over $400,000 that's going right back into our community, to our schools, to our churches, to our civic organizations. So if buying a steamed cheeseburger from the VFW or fresh cut fries from the Exchange Club isn't enough, we also have 10,000 exhibit entries. We have free entertainment with three stages. We have headline entertainment with Martina McBride, Craig Morgan. We have Mud's Gone Nuts. We have Demolition Derby, Giant Pumpkins, Petting Zoo, Connecticut Wine Festival, Redneck Arena, Horse Pulls, Discovery in the Connecticut Ag Tent, Farm Museum, Midway Rides, Roller Coasters, Games, Crafts, Indoor and Outdoor Commercial Shopping, Lots of Food, and the Cherry on Top, a Baby Alpaca this year. So please join us September 24th through the 27th for some good, clean, wholesome fun. Thank you, Deb. Uh, also, I just want to introduce people that will not be speaking today that are here. Uh, Mayor uh, Enzo Fienza from the town of Cromwell. Uh, I, uh, Tony Salvatore, you want to stand up as our town manager representing you. Uh, as you know, the former police chief, now the uh, town manager. Uh, mayor Dan Drew, the great mayor of the city of Middletown, and Greg Shook, uh, our vice chair from Essex Savings Bank of the Chamber. Let's have a round of applause for all of them. It uh, gives me a great honor now to uh, recognize Rosa Brown, uh, the first Hispanic elected uh, NAACP branch uh, president in the state of Connecticut. Uh, we're very honored because we have worked very close uh, with the NAACP for many years, really thanks to Faith Jackson, who's with us here today, that uh, got us involved uh, both in the side street program and also to get more involved in the community uh, with the minority community. And I can't uh, thank Faith enough for that over a period of years. She's been a mentor to me. But this year, uh, our local branch of the NAACP was presented uh, the 2015 Thalheimer Award from the NAACP for the outstanding uh, chapter in the state of Connecticut. Uh, this award is presented to branches throughout the state 
uh, and basically they have to do above and beyond the call of duty. In this case, not only working with our side street to main street program, but running multiple programs uh, in the city of Middletown. I'm honored to be a member of the NAACP, and Rosa, please stand, hold up those plaques, and be recognized. Thank you very much. Next, uh, Lou Brockett, chair of our Expo Committee, uh, who we have a little event coming a week uh, from Monday here. Uh, we'll have about 1,500 at our business after work and five or 6,000 people coming for our Expo. Lou. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Well, a week from today, besides the Durham Fair coming up, we do have the Business Expo. And on that day, we got a lot of many things that are going to be happening. First, uh, we open up with our opening ceremonies at 11.15. The Expo, Expo kicks off with a luncheon at 11.30 uh, with the, our uh, Small Business Awards featuring Commissioner Catherine Smith uh, from the DECD. And then finally, the rest of the morning and uh, afternoon will be open to the general public. We have three seminars that are going on that day. Uh, as you look inside your flyers that we've uh, handed on the tables there and all, it gives a complete listing. But one of the most important things though is uh, we want to make sure that uh, people when they come here, come enjoy what you're doing that day. Meet others, network and everything else because at four o'clock in the afternoon we open it up for the members for the uh, executive uh, meeting and that way there you can walk around, plenty of food, sponsored here by Cromwell, the Crown Plaza and all. And then also, uh, the, there's other two other events that are coming here as well. Uh, Middlesex County Fall Career Fair. Uh, every year we have two times a year we use the uh, career fair itself, once in the spring, once in the fall. And so we'll have over 50 uh, folks uh, taking resumes and everything else as well as resume writers. And then finally, the Health and Wellness Fair. Middlesex Hospital helps us out every year by uh, setting up in the back hallway here with different uh, folks coming in from both the uh, primary and urgent care center, the cancer center, the travel clinic, the rehabilitation services, home care, and most of all, we also offer the flu shot. So if you need your flu shots, dear, please stop by for that. And once again, uh, that's next Monday from 11.30 to 7. Have a great day. Immediately afterwards today in the Jersey Room, which is right behind here, we'll have a, an accountable care organization workshop for those people that want to attend that. That's in the Jersey Room immediately afterwards. Uh, also, our next breakfast uh, is with Kevin Ollie, the head basketball coach at the University of Connecticut, which will be two weeks uh, from today. Got a lot of events for the Chamber in a short period of time, and I really appreciate uh, the wonderful support uh, of our membership for all of these multiple events we'll be running. Uh, I, I'm going to turn it over to Vin to introduce our speaker in a second, but uh, I would be remiss if I didn't uh, just talk a little bit about Aetna as a corporate uh, citizen. Uh, Aetna has been working hand in glove with this chamber uh, for, since I've been involved here, since 1983. Uh, not only uh, as a excellent uh, corporate leader, uh, but more importantly, uh, a, a, an organization that constantly, constantly gives back uh, to the state of Connecticut and to wherever they have located. Uh, we're so fortunate uh, in the state of Connecticut to have a company like Aetna. Our side street to main street program that I mentioned before that uh, Chris Montrose has worked with us uh, is a unbelievable program uh, that was brought to us by the NAACP back in the 90s. Faith Jackson and John Robinson saw me. I basically said, you got to do something for the uh, minority community. At that time, the African American community really was reaching out uh, to a lot of business organizations in the state of Connecticut. Dial forward, we've had 226 people graduate from this, cor uh, this course. 226. We named it Side Street to Main Street for a reason. We wanted the Middletown and all of our towns to be more inclusive and not to have all of the businesses on Main Street owned by people like myself. We wanted to have a mix of Latino, Asian, African American, and that has happened. You go up and down Main Street, Middletown, 
you go throughout our whole county, you come to our events, and you see a cross-section of what a community really should look like. This would not have been possible without the long-term commitment of Aetna. It could not have been done. They have made a major difference in the minority community, not only in Middletown, because we take people now from all over in it. In fact, uh, Friday, I had two people come down from Hartford uh, that wanted to get involved in it. And I, for one, and representing our 2,100 members, Karen, I want to thank you as a leader of Aetna for reaching out and making such a difference in so many people's lives in the state of Connecticut. Thank you very much. And now I have uh, the honor again to have uh, Vin Capice who um, I, I just can't say enough good things about him, but we'll just get him up and he can introduce our speaker. Thanks, Larry. I don't mind, you can say as many good things about me as you want. <laughs> I don't usually hear very many, so. <laughs> um, well, it is my distinct honor and pleasure to introduce to you this morning, uh, Karen Lynch, who is the president of Aetna. And before I do that, I want to say some nice things about her. Uh, first of all, Aetna is one of the um, leaders uh, uh, in, our, in our state in terms of uh, being an economic engine. Uh, they employ over 10,000 um, employees in the state of Connecticut and 50,000 employees throughout the country. Uh, they also have over 24 million um, members of their medical plans uh, throughout the country. So they are a major player um, in the healthcare field. and. Uh, as the president of Middlesex Hospital, Middlesex Hospital has enjoyed um, a long um, and productive relationship with Aetna. And we've found them to be very innovative and open to new ideas and new ways of approaching health care. Uh, and an example of that is Middlesex Hospital is part of an entity called the Value Care Alliance, which is a group of hospitals that have come together to find ways of improving quality and reducing costs. And we are partnering with Aetna around a product that is designed to do that, a co-branded product that will be sold um, uh, starting January 1st. So we're really excited about that. And I'm excited about the opportunity of introducing uh, Karen Lynch. So Ms. Lynch, um, I'll talk to, uh, read a little bit of her bio here. It goes on. I'm going to try to synthesize it. But she's got a lot of interesting things uh, about her career and a lot of great accomplishments that she's had. And I just want to highlight some of them. Uh, she joined Aetna in 2012 as, as Executive Vice President and Head of Specialty Products. In 2013, she assumed management of local and regional businesses, Aetna's largest business unit dedicated to serving uh, the varied healthcare needs of individuals and employers. Uh, Ms. Lynch successfully led Aetna's integration efforts of its 2013 acquisition of Coventry Healthcare, which at that time was the largest acquisition of Aetna's history. Um, you've heard a lot about the Humana. Uh, deal that's going on. I'm sure she's going to be very much involved in that. Um, she's had three decades of experience in the healthcare industry. Prior to joining Aetna, she served as president of Magellan Health Services, where she was resp responsible for the development and uh, operational ex execution of the company's business strategy, as well as the profit and loss for all of Magellan's business units. Prior to joining Magellan, she was president of the group disability, dental, and vision care businesses of Cigna. Uh, this role was the culmination of her career with Cigna that included a number of positions with increasing responsibility in business strategy, operations, and finance. And last but not least, one of the things that we kind of have in common is she started her career at Ernst & Young as a CPA. And I started my career as a, um, an accountant uh, CPA at Arthur Anderson, and never ever did I ever think I would work for a hospital, much less be the CEO of a hospital. And talking with Karen, she kind of had the same experience. She never thought she'd get into uh, the healthcare industry, and she ended up becoming president of Aetna. Go figure. Um, so with that, I will introduce Ms. Karen Lynch, uh, who recently was married, so she's getting used to that new name. Um, former name was Rohan. So bring her up here right now. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Vin. 
uh, and good morning, everyone. I am very delighted to be uh, with all of you this morning. Um, first of all, when everyone attends the Durham Fair this week, if you do eat those cheeseburgers, as an advocate of health and wellness, could you just maybe walk an extra couple steps for me? I'll feel better about it. <laughs> so let, let me tell you um, a little bit about, before I get started, let, let's see a show of hands and keep your hands raised. How many of you interact with the healthcare system today? Now keep your hands up if you think it's easy, uncomplicated, and easy to navigate. Just what I thought. That's the challenge we have in healthcare today. Healthcare is extremely challenging. And the rapid amount of change in the healthcare space is staggering. And as Vin, uh, well, as Vin knows, um, it is an area of significant opportunity for all of us. The entire healthcare system is incredibly challenging. From your employees when they enroll and trying to navigate the enrollment process, for you making decisions around your healthcare needs of your employees, to the decisions you have to make and how you have to navigate when you go in to see a physician or you go in to see a doctor and the complications that emerge when you are told you have cancer or you told you have some chronic disease. And just think about the challenges that it, you have or your friends have had or your family have had to navigate that system and to understand it. To the time you get your EOB or your explanation of benefits and understanding the challenging cost and how you have to, and what you have to pay, what your employees have to pay, and how the hospital systems or the physicians are trying to understand the insurance regulations and the insurance um, costs that we, that we embed into, those, into that system. Never before in my 30 year history has there been an opportunity to transform the healthcare system. The time is now, and I'm going to spend the next few minutes talking about what the healthcare system, what Aetna is doing to transform and make it easier. Now, this is a journey. It's not going to happen overnight. And as Vin, as Vin shared with you, we're working with provider systems in a very new and different way. And we're very excited about the possibilities uh, here in the state of Connecticut. But as you all raised your hand or didn't raise your hand because it's difficult to navigate through the healthcare system, we have those challenges in the state of Connecticut. We have those challenges nationally. And quite frankly, we have those challenges globally. And Aetna's mission is to build a healthier world, one community, one person at a time. And that's a daunting task. So why now? Why do we think we can transform the healthcare system now? Well, as you all know, with the advent of the Affordable Care Act, or as some like to call it, Obamacare, we've seen significant ch change in the overall healthcare system. O almost nearly 10 to 12 million people have entered into healthcare where they have insurance now when they didn't before. That's, a pre that's pretty exciting for all of us, but at the same time, imagine the stress in the system when you add 10 to 12 million new members that never had insurance before. And by 2020, that number will be 20 to 25 million new people entering into the insurance system or the healthcare system. Because of this change, the way we operate today is not sustainable. The cost of healthcare is the single highest cost in all of your personal wallets, in your business wallets, and quite frankly, it is the highest trending cost for the government. So it's time for change.
there are three constituents in the healthcare system that I'm going to talk about individually. Think about the three as the institutions or the employers and the government who are subsidizing a significant amount of the health care cost. The second is the provider community. And the third is you and me, or the consumers. Each one of those constituents is impacted very differently and very dramatically. So let's talk about the providers. What are we seeing in the provider space today? The first thing that we're seeing is significant provider consolidation. I had the opportunity last week to go visit a physician group in New York. That physician group, I hate to tell you, Vin, is trying to disrupt the hospital systems. What they're doing is they're expanding their scope and services. So what they're trying to do is capture more and more share of our wallets. And when we walk into those physician groups, they're trying to keep us there. And what he's trying to do is he's expanding both geographically and he's expanding the services. And he's thinking about it with the consumer in mind. So for example, what he does in his physician practice is he recognizes women like me who are extremely business, busy and we need to go in and get our annual mammogram. He makes sure he reads it. If I need to have an ultrasound, he makes sure I have it there. And then we have the conversation around what's, ha what's next. He's bringing in all the services that you typically would go to a hospital for because the hospitals are scary. And he's bringing the consumers into his physician practice so that they can navigate through one single point of entry, and that's the physician office. So what are we seeing providers do and hospitals do? They're interacting di very differently with us. We're seeing an emergence in the hospital system where we're partnering. We, healthcare carriers, and hospital systems are building alliances, like Vin referred to before, where we're together partnering and introducing new products in, into the market where we have a commitment to improving the affordability and the quality of care. One of the things that Aetna did in Northern Virginia is we entered into a joint venture relationship with the Nova Health System where we're a 50-50 partner with a hospital. So they're taking the risk with us. And we both have one common goal. And that one common goal is to improve the health and the quality. And by doing so, improve the affordability of health care. We have seen in that one relationship dramatic growth in individuals wanting to come to, part, to, to the Nova Health System. But more importantly, we've seen significant improvements in the quality of care, which has led to a dramatic decrease in the overall cost of health care. So let's talk about consumers, the third constituent that's impacted by the ever-changing landscape of health care. That's you and me. And what do we demand every day? Well, we live by these. Everyone has these. This apple has dramatically changed the way in which we work and live every single day. So what are consumers demanding on the healthcare system? They're demanding information. They're demanding transparency. They're demanding what I call healthcare on the go. Aetna's been introducing and, buy, and purchasing a lot of assets to help advance consumer tools and technology. We bought a company called iTriage a couple years ago. iTriage allows you to go on right now, and if you're feeling a symptom, you can go on, navigate through our iTriage app, but you can all download it, you don't have to have Aetna. That it will tell you 
what you should be considering about that symptom. As a matter of fact, it saved the lives, life of one of our employees' husbands. One of our employees' husbands came home from playing basketball, and he had an injury. And the injury wasn't reflective of, and the symptoms of his injury wasn't reflective of, of what happened on the basketball court. So she, so she, our employee, immediately went to eye triage, and she looked up the symptoms. And, one of the, and what eye triage, what the app said was, you need to get him to the hospital or an air, urgent care facility. She immediately put her husband in the car and took him to an urgent care facility. And thank God she did because she saved his life. That's the kind of transparency and tools that the healthcare system is demanding today. I had the opportunity to spend some time with a six-year-old cancer patient not too long ago. This young lady was the most courageous young lady I have ever met. But when I had the opportunity to talk to her parents about what they were going through and the challenges that they that, that affected them. They, had, they started their journey, they live in Florida, and they started their journey in the healthcare system in Florida. They lost, their doctors were not connected, they weren't coordinated, and then the mom took it in her own hands. She started doing research, because now, with the advent of the web and technology and tools, you can learn more about anything you want to learn about relative to healthcare. She took it in her own hands, and she found her way to Sloan Kettering. And thank God she did, because her daughter had a rare form of cancer that wasn't detected until she learned more about the symptoms and more about the, the treatments that were available to her daughter. So consumers are demanding, and Vin, you probably know this, what we're seeing now is consumers walk into their physician offices armed with information. They're asking more about the cost of health care. They're asking why they need that test. That's going to change the way we collectively operate because Amazon, Google are all entering into the health care space. And they're providing access, information, and tools in a way healthcare has never seen before. And that requires us to change the way in which we operate our businesses. Because consumers are demanding that they understand, and they understand the cost, and they understand why we are doing the things we're doing. So I want you to imagine healthcare in the future. And I want you to imagine living in the community in which we live in today, where the provider is the focal point of your healthcare. Where Middlesex Hospital is the focal point of your healthcare. Where you're connected in the community, because every community is different when it comes to population health. Every, and, and one of the learnings that we've had over time is all health care is local. Just like politics, all health care is local. And when we have instituted national programs, we realized that, na that we can't deliver national programs because every community is different. So I want you to imagine a world where you have available tools so that when you have to answer questions or you have to make decisions about your insurance, you have the experience by a shop, by an enroll tool that you can insure yourself in the way you need to insure yourself. What we've found as we've done research is many people are overinsured. They buy too much insurance because we haven't given them the tools and technology to allow them to make the right decisions for their families. Imagine a world where you have the healthcare on the go, when you walk into a hospital facility and they coordinate all your care. And they navigate 
the healthcare system for you. Imagine that it's personalized to you. Imagine if you have a chronic disease or pain, or pain management and you need pain management, that you receive alerts and tools from either your carrier or from your hospital about what you need on that day. Imagine that you're, right at, you're driving by CVS or Walgreens and you, re, and you receive an alert on your iPhone to tell you that your prescription's ready and that you need to pick it up. Imagine that the cost is more affordable now because we have improved the quality of care. Imagine new entrants into the marketplace that are recreating and shaping the way in which we do business. There's a new health plan in New York that worries me. How many of you heard of Oscar Health Plan? Oscar Health Plan is geared towards the next generation of millennials. What have they done? They have stormed into the New York market like you've never seen before. Why? They have no paper. They are totally automated. And guess what? You can get a quote online in like three minutes. Imagine that. Now, granted, I'm not that worried about them because I'm worried that they're not going to live financially. But they're showing us a new world of healthcare. So what happens when we imagine the future of healthcare? There's one measure and one measure only. It's called good health over time. So there's never been a better time to be in healthcare. I'm really excited that all parties are now at the table ready and willing to transform the healthcare space. And I couldn't be more excited to be leading the most innovative co company in the nation that is committed to improving the health of the world, one person, one community at a time. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to answer questions that you might have. And um, I'll open up the floor. So um, there, there are privacy laws, they're called HIPAA, and it, it's not necessarily prohibitive of um, sharing records across, um, across organizations. We have what um, we call um, EMRs, uh, medical rec so electronic medical records that we are, uh, that now more and more hospital, where are you on that, do you have them up and running? So all the hospitals have electronic medical records and are sharing that kind of information. Now it needs to be, you know, there needs to be um, protection around it. There needs to be encryption when, the, when we're uh, sharing uh, data across organizations. But we are starting to see the emergence of more and more electronic medical records shared across the spectrum. And that's where the future is headed so that we can coordinate all that care. Because if we can't get there, will never be able to manage that person holistically. Other questions? The question is, what are we learning from other countries around how they um, manage health care? Well, every country is um, very different. What we're seeing um, in Southeast Asia, emerging middle class, um, there's not a lot of coordination of care. Uh, what we're, we're actually, we have an international business. 
Um, we're working um, very closely um, it, with certain countries uh, across the organization. We actually just um, start, uh, we're, uh, just entered into a new product where we're covering all of uh, new babies and um, the health and wellness of uh, new babies in some of these emerging countries. You know, we've seen other countries that are very uh, social and cover um, sort of everything by the government. That necessarily hasn't worked in those countries because there's been long um, waiting lines and um, access to care is uh, not as quick as it needs to be. Uh, we believe that you know, the United States has the absolute best health care system. We just need to make it better and more affordable. Yes. That's what we need to change uh, because now, uh, you know, we have policies and rules and um, we need to put the care in the hands of the caregivers. And that's the part of the changing of health care that is elusive to us today and that's what we're trying to change. It's called, you know, trusting the caregiver and managing the overall health. We understand that, we recognize it. You're right, we've done, silly, we do stupid stuff, um, quite frankly, and we're changing that. And it'll take us some time because, um, you know, we have to understand, you know, how, how to make those changes and we have to put the, um, put the care in the hands of the provider and that's where we're headed and that's what we need to do and that's where we're headed as a company. Will it happen overnight? Absolutely not. It's a journey, and that's how we're trying to transform the healthcare system. Uh, you have spoken about technology, uh, but you haven't defined uh, there is a big challenge in the healthcare system to navigate uh, for the undocumented and also individuals that doesn't speak uh, English mm -hmm. language, and also the literacy level of some individuals that cannot read and write. So technology actually is not working. So navigating the system is really, really difficult for this type of individual. So can you talk about a little bit how this will be addressed? Yeah, so um, the, the question is, can, you know, there's a um, challenge. Technology isn't the answer to everything that people, there's literacy, literacy uh, issues, undocumented people that, you know, have difficult, uh, difficulty understanding healthcare. First and foremost, one of the things we're doing um, is this is where our focus on the community really matters. And one of the things that we're doing is really looking at the communities in which we operate in and making sure that we are reflective of the face of that community. That's number one. Number two is we are simplifying and moving to have what we call more plain language so that people can understand insurance in a much simpler and easier way. We are also, because we are operating in different communities, you know, in improving our language, meaning we, sh we don't have and we should have Spanish across you know, the board in all of our materials, um, and we're doing those kinds of things as well. So simpler uh, products, plain language, reflecting the communities in which we operate and quite fr frankly building talent and hiring talent to reflect the communities where we work and we have uh, a long way to go there. Oh. <laughs> well, maybe that's the case, but yes, we actually have a program um, called, we introduced uh, the End of Life program a couple years ago where we actually brought, you know, where 
We were very, because we saw escalating cost and, and, that, and people were spending lots and lots of money. Um, what we've done is we've um, brought a program in where we have, we bring people home and then we manage um, with nurses and caregivers so that um, those individuals can, can peacefully um, pass and we're, we're, that program has done, has had dramatic results on kind of family satisfaction and supporting of the, those individuals. Uh, and we found, you know, people are, mu our families are much happier. It's been a, you know, a, a program that has done wonders for us and wonders for our, our, our families of those individuals that have, you know, passed on. Um, so we have worked on it. Um, we're probably leading the industry with that program right now. So our CEO uh, is very passionate about alternative uh, care. Um, he had a very um, almost he almost died in a in an accident, and he lives with chronic pain management today. And one of the things that he uh, has done for us and for the industry is really improve our approach to alternative care of medicine. We have yoga; we cover it. We, uh, yeah, and we have, we have ha lo many, I, won't, I can't quote a number, many of our, even our Connecticut-based employees who participate in yoga. Um, we believe in sort of alternative care um, approaches. We cover them in many of our uh, benefit plans if employers um, choose those designs. So we're very innovative in that space. Um, we passionately believe in it. And we have uh, worked very hard over the course of the last couple of years to integrate alternative medicines in our programs and how, in our approach to healthcare. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Karen. I really enjoyed it. Uh, it was a Great uh, questions and great answers. Thank you very much. Uh, just again, our expo is next week, starts at 11.30 in the morning. Uh, we have our uh, luncheon with uh, Catherine Smith, uh, head of DECD. Our next breakfast is on October 5th with uh, Kevin Ollie, head basketball coach at the University of Connecticut. Uh, immediately afterwards, all those people that were in our side street to main street program, we want you to come up and get a photo uh, with Karen and Chris uh, and Marta too. We'd like to have you because you're part of uh, the chamber team. And again, uh, thank you all for being here today. Just remember, sun always shines in Middlesex County. Have a great day.